Seven awesome daily drivers even you can afford. Hello and welcome to Car Throttle. I'm Alex and because we're all on lockdown, many of us are saving a ton of money by not spending cash on our favourite hobbies. We are bored. And I mean really bored. So when we've all beaten this virus and when we're allowed out again, we deserve to treat ourselves with cool new daily drivers that definitely won't bore us car enthusiasts. So here are my top picks of cars that are cheap to run, cheap to buy, but definitely not boring to drive. BMW E46 Compact. As a lover of old BMWs like E46s and currently an E34 Touring, Let's start off with a fairly obvious one. The short and arguably ugly BMW E46 Compact might not be a looker, but it ticks the rear-wheel drive and biggish engine boxes straight off the bat, with the 325i variant producing 192 horsepower. What's more, parts for E46s are plentiful, and the car can be transformed quickly and cheaply with a host of supporting mods. And prices for this six-cylinder goodness kick off from just £1,000 in the UK. Now sure, E46 is loved to rust, but the M54 engine is super smooth and, if maintained properly, very robust. Audi A2 Compared with a lot of more recent, more generic products from Audi, the relatively outlandish A2 shines bright. The Super Mini has an air of quirky coolness to it, and it's not just the styling that separates it from its contemporaries. It's built largely from aluminium, and that means that many versions weigh under 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. What's more, the range of simple, lightweight petrol and turbo diesel engines make for an incredibly economical car. And decent examples start from only a grand. Buy as soon as we've beaten the virus and I reckon that you've bagged yourself a future classic. But remember one thing, that aluminium body will not be cheap to repair. Alfa Romeo 147 with ancient underpinnings and iffy build quality, the 147 is hardly Alfa Romeo's finest work. But with prices now at rock bottom, this pretty hatchback looks pretty tempting. Prices for a 2.0-litre T-Spark with 150 horsepower start at around £850, and we're starting to see the sleeker post-facelift 147s drop below the £1,000 mark. Just avoid the Selly Speed semi-automatic gearbox like the plague and make sure the cam belt on the Twin Spark petrol engine was changed when it should have been. Otherwise, very bad things might happen under the bonnet. You could, of course, just say f*** it and spend upwards of £9,000 on the best front-wheel drive car I've ever driven, the 147 GTA. And if that sounds like a bad idea, just listen to this. Toyota Celica Now I know what you're thinking. How can I include a coupe in a list of cheap-to-buy, cheap-to-run daily drivers? Simple. With the rear seats folded down, you've got loads of space, and this is an appealing car that is cheap to buy and cheap to run. Prices for Celicas start as low as £600, they're generally very reliable, and insurance is much more reasonable than you'd expect. Granted, the entry-level model isn't exactly fast with 140 horsepower from the 1.8-litre 1ZZ engine, but the slightly more expensive 2ZZ 1.8 co-developed with Yamaha produced a much spicier 190 horsepower. And hey, when lockdown is over and you're choosing between this and a boring hatchback, there's no contest. Hyundai Coupe Another front-wheel drive coupe, also known as the Tiburon in many markets. Just whatever you do, avoid the facelift. It's one of the ugliest designs I've ever seen, even making a Fiat Multipla look like a supermodel. First-generation cars are thin on the ground, so you'll have more luck finding a tidy second-generation example. As with the Celica, this is not a fast car. The 2.0-litre version puts out 134 horsepower, which will get you to 60 miles an hour in just under 10 seconds. There is also a 2.7-litre V6 in the second-gen car too, which develops, hold on to your hats, 167 horsepower, and these can be had for as little as £1,000. Inside, you get leather, electrics, plenty of space for daily driver duties and the cars are super reliable. And even I can vouch for the Hyundai Coupe. As a 21 year old I used to roll around in a first generation car between England and Germany. And my very own girlfriend had a second gen coupe until recently. It was comfortable, looked good and was always super reliable. What more can you want? VW Lupo 
Right, enough of the pseudo sports cars, let's now look at a plucky, dependable city car, the VW Lupo. Except for the GTI model, none are quick. But the Lupo is a much more interesting car than the Drab Fox which replaced it. And we reckon values of these comparatively rare cars are starting to creep up. These days, or when we're all allowed out again, you'll need to spend at least £500 to buy one. Whether or not you slam it and put it on big wheels is up to you. Ford Sport KA a 1.6 litre engine seems massive for a hatchback like the KA these days. KA? Car? Ka? Ka? But the frisky Sport KA comes from a simpler time. Free from forced induction, its inline four needs to be spanked to extract the 94 horsepower on offer, which, thanks to a close ratio gearbox and suspension from its Puma brother, is an utter joy. The cheapest Sport KA starts at only 700 quid, which is absolute bargain territory for a car as versatile and fun as this one. Out of all the cars on the list, I'd be most tempted with either the BMW Compact or the Audi A2, but I'd love to know what you guys think, so make sure you comment below. Until then, from Maisie and I, stay safe, stay at home, and only go out when absolutely necessary. We'll see you again next week. Come on, Maisie, let's go.